Welcome. I want to welcome everyone to our launch party for Blessed to Be Me. Thank you all for being here and thank you all for um, participating in the number of things I've asked you to do. So as a preface to this, uh, Blessed to Be Me will be released this coming Tuesday, which is April 14th. Today is Saturday, April 11th, and this is my crew. So thank you all for being here and I'll introduce everybody as we go along. What I've asked everyone to participate in, as you can tell, is to wear a hat. And the whole theory behind the hat thing was, since it's been over a month that any of us could get our hair done, I figured <laughs> it might be a good idea. And I thought it would be fun and festive as well. I guess I should introduce myself in case people watching won't know. I'm Jean Alfieri. I'm the author of Blessed to Be Me. This is my crew. And everybody here has had a very instrumental part in the book coming together and they say it takes a village it truly does so on top of asking everyone to wear a hat i ask that everybody bring a beverage of their choice and we'll announce that as we go along i've got a blue moon going on here so um that's my my drink of choice and everyone i've asked everyone to bring a, a thankful to the party and to talk about their favorite prompt because everybody's familiar with the book to um, know what their prompts are and, and what they enjoyed most and you know, whatever makes you comfortable. If you wanna read it, if you wanna just tell it, however you wanna do it. Um, I don't have a favorite prompt because I created them all, so it's kind of tough. I will say that the first prompt that started all of this was the first one, and that is It Must Be Love and how it started. And that's that was the one that kicked it all off, and that's why I made it the first prompt. And my thankful today, I've got two. Um, first, all of you for participating and for being a part of this book. So I am thankful for all of you and the many different ways you supported this. And I am thankful for the technology that brought us all together because I gotta tell you, I wouldn't have guessed we could have this pe these many people from different places around the country together on this day, if not for this, um, without this virtual party. So it's kind of been interesting how all of it's come together in the weird way it's, it's worked out. So <laughs> I'm thankful for that as well. So without further ado, um, I want to start with someone who's not here, and that is Alex. So Alexandra Ruiz did some original art for this book, and she is also my illustrator for all of the Zuggy the Pug books. And so I wanted to mention her because she would love to be here. I sent her the invitation. She's in the Philippines. And I said, Alex, I don't know what time it is for you there, but we'd love to have you. And she said, oh, it's three in the morning. I don't think I can make it. And of course, when I told my husband, Josh, that she had to bow out, he's like, what do you mean? Three in the morning, she should be doing shots. And I'm like, no, I think if she wants to be in bed at three in the morning, that's very fair. So, so she's not here, but she's with us in spirit. So I wanted to call her out and, and thank her for her participation in this book as well. And then um, Karen my good friend Karen Baird, um, who has been with me since grade school, for gosh sakes, and we, yeah. and we, I think, you know, we really got together during um, youth group in high school. That was when we really hung out and, and didn't get in too much trouble, so that was good, but here we are today. So thank you for being here, and I'll let you kick us off. So funny that you say we've been together since grade school and high school. I decided to do the interview questions. Oh. Um, on page 69 and 70 of your book. Um, and it's funny that you bring up youth group because that's what I'm going back to. So clearly we were best friends and we have been for a long time that we would go back to the same memory. Yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna go quickly through the interview questions. There's um, seven of them and I'm just gonna go through them real fast as if I was to be interviewed. Okay. Um, it says, we have been friends since, and I said freshman year in high school um, and I also said, go Bulldogs, so let's be clear. Yay. About that. <laughs> um, and I said, mostly, um, this was a time in our life when we were friends because we were in youth group together. So if someone asked me to describe you, I'd say, and I've often said this about you, and I've said it to her face, actually, that she's my gypsy girlfriend. Um, and I live very vicariously through her. Um, she has moved so many times, and she just lives her life, and she's always happy wherever she ends up. And um, I said that you are just very different from my deep-seated family roots where I never left McHenry County. I have stayed here. <laughs> what happened to your house? I know, exactly. Here, I'll try this one. I have a backup. 
Um, and then I, and then I went on to describe one of the best times in life that we had. Um, it was during a youth group outing where we went to great America oh, yeah. oh, and we yeah. picked up two sailor boys yes, we did. Were there, walking around <laughs> as two very young hip girls. Um, we had to take, we took the boys, we ended up taking the boys back to the Great Lakes Naval Academy. And I, said what were we thinking back in those days we didn't have right. gps on our car and Gene right. and I ended up getting lost on the way back home yep we ended up out on some back road and we finally found grass lake road which i said oh my gosh i think i know where we are and we kept driving and we ended up um in fox lake and i called my dad to say we were running late <laughs> um, I, I so number four in her list is i still laugh when i think about and I laugh about my dad waiting at the front door with all of his worry on his face. And I've never fussed up to him, but if he only knew that it was because we had dropped off two sailors. <laughs> and um, <laughs> the only thing I had to add to this was, but Mr. Blue Eyes was worth it, wasn't he? Jean? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and he and I actually, we wrote for over a year together when he left. And that's how long ago this was, right? When you would write. So yes, yeah, we wrote letters. We were babies. Just crazy. So I said, I was so proud of you. Well, each time you picked up and moved again, but really the first book, My Friends, the Author, that's one step removed from someone famous, isn't it? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> But what I admire most about you is your carefree attitude, your faith in God, the fact that you're still my friend in spite of me. So um, I treasure our friendship because you remind me that I've got this, that I'm a good person with a big heart, and that the noise in my life is just that noise. And I also treasure that you see me and you use me and my talents, and it's nice to be needed. So um, three things that I'm most thankful for today. Uh, op the opportunity to share in the happiness of my friend and her success, the health and safety of my family during these crazy times, and um, all the many blessings that surround me, including all of my cherished friendships that I have. I'm constantly reminded by these w wonderful women and, um, and truly by my friend Jean, so thank you. Awesome, thank you, Karen. I You're love welcome. you. I love you too. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> you didn't tell us what you were drinking, Karen. I'm drinking a White Claw because clearly it's five o'clock somewhere, even though it's only <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Better girl. <laughs> so cheers to Jean. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. 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 All right. So, Chris, I have you going next. Is that okay? That's fine. <laughs> All right. Oh. Um, I am so excited to be here, and, and I just have to say, Jean, from a client perspective, you are one of the best clients I've ever had. Oh, it has just been you. such a blessing to work with you and, and do the layout and incorporate all of your great information and the graphics and the quotes into your book. And I'm just so excited to get a physical copy of it in my hands. <laughs> Me um, too. <laughs> I'll be one of the first people to order it on, on Tuesday. So. Um, my oh i'm drinking water i'm actually very boring today i've not had enough water in my system that's so. okay I and like i you. apologize because i didn't introduce chris so chris <laughs> is my print layout and design person and she and i met probably a, what a month six weeks ago something yeah, like about that six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. and we've put this thing together she has been outstanding for me because i have not been familiar with amazon before now and she's walking me through all of the tricks and and tri tips of how to get stuff up there and what to do. And so through her, we've gotten the Zuggy books on Amazon and now this one will also be published through Amazon. Such a blessing, so exciting. <laughs> so my favorite prompt, and um, it was very ironic that it came up today. I'm actually gonna just flip over so I can read it. Um, that it came up today was because last year I took the best vacation ever. And my daughters were posting pictures about it today. Um, I guess for National Sibling Day, which was yesterday, they were like, oh, you know, the, you're my travel besties. And, and they were posting pictures from this vacation. So um, doing a cruise, a long cruise, like 10 days to Canada has always been on my bucket list. Yeah. And I wanted to do something with my girls, my, my three daughters. I have three daughters. And I really wanted this to be a mom and daughter trip. 
So I spent about five months planning where we were going to go, what we were going to do. And um, then I just called up and booked. And I said to the girls, you know, take these days off and we're headed to Canada. And it, it was just so much fun. Um, my husband dropped us off in Baltimore and we got on the boat. Um, we were dancing. We saw shows. The food was fabulous. We met some fantastic people. And it really enabled me to um, put another item on my bucket list, which is to go back to Maine because Maine was one of the stops that we did. And Maine is just absolutely gorgeous. So we went through Acadia Park. We ate lobster. And it was just such a fun trip and such a blessing and um it really has made me want to do another cruise with the girls because they're just they're fantastic to hang nice. out with that sounds wonderful <laughs> i'm glad you shared that because i'll have to look into that now <laughs> <laughs> wait until this whole thing is over and they're not floating petri dishes <laughs> right right exactly very good thank you chris and so you're having water we got your thankful we got okay we're good we're good yeah okay so Mary Beth, the doctor is in the house. My classy, sassy, and a little smart assy friend. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm not a little smart assy. I'm way smart assy. Yes, that's, that's true. true. <laughs> Go ahead. It's all yours. Okay. Well, I, I've got all the, the um, I'm super prepared, kind of. Um, but I've got like all the, the things we're supposed to say. I'm from Colorado. So right now I'm looking out my window at the Rocky Mountains and it's a beautiful day. Oh, nice. And um, I am drinking bubbly, which is like LaCroix, but oh. it's called bubbly and I call it Buble because I, he's Michael Buble is in the commercial. Uh -huh. so. uh -huh. and, <laughs> and as Jean and Carol know, I can't drink any alcohol because I just fall asleep. So we're just doing uh, sparkling water today. And um, and the thing that I'm thankful for, we're doing the coronavirus quarantine at the moment, but I have absolutely loved at this time to just kind of stop my, my crazy schedule and take some time off and breathe and relax and get much more connected with what's actually important with me or to me. So, um, so that has been a blessing. Um, too bad it took a, you know, worldwide virus to make it happen right but um so i love the concept of this book and um it brought up so many things that i would just normally not think were very you know were very noteworthy or very important and um and i um i I was talking to my daughter who's now 16 about all these prompts and we started listing up off all the really stupid things that we have laughed about through the years. And my, my parents were both really funny and they both have passed on, but you know, we managed to, you know, laugh all the time when we were growing up. But, um, I think the writing prompt that I like so much is the, the thing that you didn't realize was so important then, but, then it turned out to be really important. So number three, the see clearly now. And um, a, a, about a year ago, um, my daughter who was 15, she does a lot of sports and she, I kind of made her play basketball because I was a basketball player. And so I was like, no, really you should. And so um, she humored me for a while, for several years. And um, finally came the time when she was in high she was going she was in high school and her coach who she had been in club basketball with for years he <clears> said I, I just really want you you know I'm so excited for you to play I'm so excited and then as soon as he said that Sophia turned into a different kid and I knew it I, I'm like something happened today because the kid that I the funny smart assy you know <laughs> hilarious stupidly silly kid is gone and so for three or four months, I kept saying something happened and I don't think she wants to play basketball anymore. What she didn't know is I wasn't going to let her because I knew she didn't want to play, but she wanted, she felt really obligated. So finally things came to a head. It was like the week before you had to say, okay, I'm going to play. And, um, uh, so, um, she was at a friend's house and she called me and she's like, mom, I need mom time. Come pick me up. So I came to pick her up. We went to old Chicago and we just sat there 
and we hashed it all out. And finally, you know, I could just tell she was just agonizing over this conver this this whole thing. And I finally said, do you feel obligated to your coach? Is that why you're wanting to play? And it's just, you know, one of those wonderful conversations where the light goes on and you can see that somebody is like, oh, yes, that's exactly why that's, mm -hmm. that's the only reason I'm doing this. And, um, and so I just kind of let her stew in that for a minute. And literally, I mean, even though she was a 15 year old at the time, it was like, she lost, you know, she lost such a burden. She looked young and happy again. And the real Sophia came right back to me and she said, okay, okay, I'm not going to play. All right. Okay. And then it was over, you know, just yeah. like that. But it was such a neat experience just to be with her during that time and to help her through it because, um, you know, we all get that way. We all, you know, have these ideas and we don't even know that we have them. And then we're stuck with this idea like, you know, I really should do this or I shouldn't do this. And then when the clouds part and we see the light, it's so wonderful. And, and our true selves really just rush right back. And um, it was a wonderful experience. So, and then not only did I remember that experience, but so many other things that um, Sophie and I have talked about since um, being introduced to Jean's book. So Jean, awesome. thank you. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. That's so cool. All righty then. So moving right along, my lovely sister-in-law, Joanne. And Joanne, I'm sorry, but I'm going to share with them what you said to me before this started because it was so funny. She sends me this text five minutes of the hour and says, I am thankful today for my sister-in-law who has me drinking at two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> and I said, but, but I won't say that. And I'm like, you absolutely could say that. It's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. All right. Well, on that note, my I'm thankful for my beverage of choice. Yeah. And, um, but no, I'm thankful for the sun shining today. And I got to spend some time out in the sun, relaxing with my husband and son on the deck. Nice. Um, I'm from Hawthorne Woods, Illinois. That's where I'm joining you from today. And um, hey, Joe. My, yes. What is your beverage of choice? I didn't catch what it was. My beverage of choice is Jeremiah Sweet Tea Vodka and Lemonade. Nice. All right, yes. then. Oh. Very good. <laughs> That's what she has me doing at two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, and hard to choose, hard to choose from all the, the blessings and prompts, um, all the prompts, very hard to choose, but I'm going to go with prompt number one, as you had mentioned earlier, Jean, um, okay. how it all started. And how it all started at this, for this part of my life, I guess you might say, um, I had been my husband and I were, had been dating for four years already. And um, I have had at the time a six-year-old son from a previous marriage. And my husband all along for four years was never getting married. He told me clear out many, many times, I'm not getting married, I'm never getting married. And at that point, after four years, he was 46 and okay, he's never getting married. So I had to stop and question, where's this relationship going? Loved him, he loved me, we loved each other, but I wasn't gonna live with someone, um, just wasn't my values, especially with having a son. So I, you know, I just kind of took it day to day and I thought, I don't really know where this is really ever gonna end up. And then um, it was a every day Monday, August 1st in, the, um, in that year, four years later after dating, came home from work and he was home uh, making dinner, pouring me a glass of wine as he did often. And, um, went up to change out of my work clothes, put on a crummy pair of shorts and a top. It was a beautiful day. He asked me to go sit outside on the deck as we would very often. And as we opened the doors to go out there, the whole deck was filled with roses everywhere. Tons and tons of colorful roses everywhere. And, um, and that's when he proposed. And I thought, and I guess you could say that's where that part of my life all started. And, um, and I guess you could say it must be love as your prompt talks about um, because as much as he said he was never getting married um, that all changed and that's where the next stage I guess you could say of our life started and um, the frosting on the cake was I get a wonderful sister-in-law all in 
<laughs> well, you know what my response to that was? It's about damn time. <laughs> it was, no. But it all happens for a reason. The blessings, like you said, blessings in life, and they happen when they're supposed to happen, and they happen for a reason. Yes. Um, the time they happen, you know, yes. you, you can't rush things along, so. Yeah. So yeah, that was my prom. Thank you, Joanne. And I should mention too, Karen and Joanne were both beta readers um, for the book. And so Joanne was kind enough to take it with her on a trip that she had and even bounced it off her sister, which, which I really appreciate because of course the more you get, the better. Um, and then Karen went so far as to even doing proofreading through the final edition. So yeah, thank you both for, for your work on that. Um, Mary Beth is, an, is one of my endorsements. Um, so I appreciated her being willing to put her name on the book, um, literally putting her name on the book. So greatly appreciate it. And last, but never least, Carol, um, I call you my writing partner in crime and it couldn't be more true. She always has an idea. She always has a better idea. Um, because I think before I call her, I have to come up with an idea and then she goes, and have you thought about this? And I'm like, Oh no, I haven't. Um, and so I just appreciate you at every level. Carol also was the print layout and design person for the Zuggy the Pug books. So that's how she's involved in this whole menagerie we call writing. So Carol, how are you? <laughs> Good. Good. I'm really happy to be here. And what really are you drinking, fun. Carol? What am I drinking? I am drinking a Coke today because I needed a little bit of a caffeine. Very boost. good. Yep. I go to. <laughs> good, good. So um, I love I love this book that you've come out with, and I love the inspiration inside of it and the questions because some of them really made me think. I like had to stop and go, okay, yeah, what situation in my life has fit some of these? Good. And thinking about you know inspirations and blessings, you know, I'm so thankful for all the people that I get to meet or who my writing or my design impacts that I don't even necessarily know on a daily basis, just how the words and actions of one person can make such a difference and ripples like ripples in a pond. And yeah. so I'm so thankful for that. But um, my favorite prompt was prompt number nine and it was remember that time. And so I started thinking, okay, what's the one thing, you know, the one memory we keep going back to. And my mom and I talk about this now 20 years later all the time <laughs> when I was 17, um, one of my heroes and inspirations was Leonard Nimoy. And I had grown up watching Star Trek, loved Spock. We had a lot in common. You know, we love science. We love adventure, exploration. We were both kind of outcasts. You know, when I was growing up, I was a nerd, so I was not popular. <laughs> you know, and so I kind of related to that. But then I started getting to know Leonard Nimoy as a person. And he wasn't just an actor or director. He wrote, too. He had fantastic poetry that he loved to write. He was a photographer. He loved to teach people and try to grow them and encourage them. I mean, he was a really incredible person and he really inspired me to be what I wanted to be. You know, if a kid from Boston, you know, who grew up in one of the poor neighborhoods could become this famous actor, I could grow up and become a writer. I could grow up and be what I wanted to be. And so when I was 17, I woke up out of bed, hair sticking up on the end, because I had just had a dream that I'd met him at a convention. I'm 17. Where am I going to go to find a convention, right? <laughs> and I jump online. This is before Google was even a thing. And I'm searching. And I find this convention that's happening in Las Vegas that August. And it had just been announced that morning, like an hour before I woke up, that he was going to be the guest of honor at this convention. So, of course, I go stampeding down the stairs. Mom, Mom, we have to go to this thing. And she's like, yeah, how are we going to afford that? So I went out. I got a job. I paid for both of our tickets and hotels to go to Las Vegas that summer. My grandfather had chipped in to buy us VIP tickets and Leonard Nimoy was giving a special speech at this convention. So he got us tickets for that. So I was able to go to that. I'm like, all right, cool. We're going to at least be in the same room. This is a step. <laughs> and as he comes out on the stage, you know, he's talking, he's sharing his stories, and I go down front because they've got the, you know, line that's queuing up to answer questions, and I'm literally sitting at his feet while he's telling these stories about his life, and a little while later, we get to go through the autograph line, and I have him sign a book of mine, and I have exactly 30 seconds to tell him, hey, <laughs> this is what you mean to me, and he stopped signing the books 
And he looked up at me and he reached out and he took my hand and he just smiled at me. He's like, thank you for telling me that. And a little while later, you know, cause they're herding through like cattle. You got your 30 seconds, move it, right? Yeah. So a little while later we go to his special presentation and he's talking about growing up in a Jewish community. And he's talking about how his experiences with God and with religion, you know, touched him and how it influenced Spock. So after this, and after he's prayed over all of us in Hebrew, everybody's kind of going down to the front of the stage and meeting him and shaking his hand. He remembers me from earlier. He kneels down, the 75 year old man <laughs> gets on his knees, wraps me in a hug and kisses me on the cheek. Nice. And that like floored me. You know, this person <laughs> I've wanted to meet all my life just treated me like I was his granddaughter, his honorary granddaughter, you know, and then that was it. And I got to meet him again a couple years later, you know, which was amazing. But to meet somebody that had inspired me so much, you know, it was really fun walking down that memory. And my mom and I to this day go, remember that time Leonard Nimoy kissed you? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was my, my story that I wrote out. That is awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And clearly you were his blessing that day too. Uh, I sure hope so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I, th I don't have any way of wrapping this up, but to say thank you again to you guys. This was wonderful. I really appreciate you taking the time on a Saturday. And I'm glad to hear the weather's decent everywhere. Chris, do you have good weather there? We do. It was um, really windy for a while, but the wind has dissipated and the sun's out and I'm actually thinking of pulling the grill out this evening. Excellent. Yeah. Yep. Good. Well, it's going to change here. If they're talking about overnight. Easter is not supposed to be as pleasant as today is. So I'm glad we're all enjoying it today and, and get to it and uh, have a great afternoon and a blessed, wonderful Easter, whatever it is that you're doing with your family, have a good one. And I'm just going to, I'm going to give you guys another cheers because I'm going to go out on the porch and finish this now myself. <laughs> bye bye everybody. Thanks so much. Bye Jeannie. And good luck. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye.